Hey there and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to continue the series that we started last week um, where we started discussing ideas on for those that might be looking to get into filming their hunts or um, sharing their videos on the internet and specifically those that maybe are looking to start a, a YouTube channel. So in that video, we took a look specifically at um, camcorders. We took a look at the Panasonic line of consumer camcorders as a good option for maybe getting started. But more importantly, we looked at the features um, that might be important to look at in different cameras. So if you haven't watched that video, I would encourage you to take a look. I'll post a link to it right there. In that video, one of the things that I mentioned is there may actually be reasons why you would prefer to shoot at 1080 resolution instead of 4K resolution. In today's video, I want to go over five reasons why you may actually prefer to shoot 1080 over 4K and specifically when we're talking about uh, videos being shared on the internet or specifically on YouTube. This isn't going to be in any particular order. Jesus, these are just some things to think about um, when considering what format you want to shoot in. So the first thing that I'll mention is the differences in file storage and, and file sizes uh, associated with 4K over 1080. So when we're talking about with your camera, the size of the SD card um, that's going to be required, 4K will fill up that SD card a lot quicker than it, than shooting in 1080 will. And similarly, when you transfer it over to your computer, it's going to require a lot more in terms of hard disk space. If you're like me and you store all of your raw footage, over the years that adds up and it can be a real nightmare trying to manage those files and the large file sizes that are associated with 4K. It's gonna require a lot of hard disk space. So the second thing that I'll mention is how cumbersome it is to edit 4K footage on your computer. It's gonna require a lot of computing resources when compared to 1080. So you need to make sure that if you have an older computing system and even some of the newer ones, you need to make sure that it's a system that's capable of handling that 4K footage. You're gonna to need to look at things like your processor speed, your CPU, you're gonna to need to look at your RAM, the memory that uh, your computer has, um, things like uh, your graphics card even, um, your editing suite, all of those things. 4K footage is, starts to get very inefficient um, when you start considering all of the different resources that are required to be able to edit it. As you start stacking footage on your timeline or start doing graphics editing, um, or start uh, color corrections, color grading. All of those things are very taxing on your computer system. So um, just make sure before you go out and, and film in 4K that your computer is capable of handling that footage either, either to watch it or especially to edit that footage. So the third thing that I'll mention is a lot of times cameras will have a recording limit with 4K footage. So you may be limited to five minutes of continuous recording and that's because 4K heats up your camera a lot. So if there's not a good way for that, uh, that heat to dissipate, um, your camera will automatically shut off after five minutes. A lot of times if you're filming outside and in the summertime, your camera will actually turn off because of high heat. So just kind of keep a look at that. Make sure that there are not recording requirements or at least that you know what those limitations are before um, you start recording in 4K. So the fourth thing that we'll talk about is the limits of of frame rates in 4K. So more often than not, you're gonna find that 4K has a limited um, lower frame rate options than shooting in 10K. As an example, the Panasonic cameras that we talked about last week, the VX981 as an example, um, shoots either 24 or 30 frames per second at 4K, but no higher. Whereas if you're shooting in 1080, you can shoot at 24, 30, 60, 120 frames per second. And of course, that's gonna be important when you're looking for that buttery smooth slow motion. So if you're shooting in slow-mo and say 120 frames per second, you're gonna have a lot more frames to extend that slow motion footage and be able to slow it down and get a lot smoother slow motion than you can when shooting at that 24 or 30 frames per second. All right, so the fifth reason why you might actually prefer to shoot 1080 over 4K is frankly, most people are not watching YouTube videos or online videos in 4K. So Taking a look at my analytics as an example, over the last 365 days, I can see that 68% of the views on my channel have been on a mobile device, so mobile phone. And then another 8% have actually been on a tablet. That, that's over three quarters of the views on my channel that are either on a tablet or a smartphone that are simply not capable of handling 4K video. So another 16% of my views are uh, on a computer, and I would contend that less than half the computer monitors today are capable of handling 4K. So that leaves less than 10%, and I think it's actually like 7% of my views are on an actual TV. And I would contend that most people still aren't watching YouTube videos on their TV in 4K, so let's say about half of that. 
So the reality is probably significantly less than 10% of the people are watching my YouTube videos in 4K. So then you have to ask yourself, is it worth the extra cost for a 4K capable camcorder? Is it worth the extra time and the inefficiencies and the cost for hard disk space and computing resources to be able to edit that 4K footage? Obviously, that's a consideration that you'll have to make for yourself, but I wanted to give you a realistic idea of why it might actually make more sense to shoot in 1080 rather than 4K, even if you have a 4K capable camera. So do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments section below if you think I'm completely off base. Do you shoot 4K? Um, let me know the reasons why you prefer to shoot 4K over 1080, and I'll address that in a future video. We'll talk about some reasons why it does make sense to shoot in 4K uh, in certain situations. All right, so my plan is to make this a weekly series, so if you have not done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and a little bell notification so that you get notified when I upload a video. If you found the video beneficial, be sure to hit the uh, like button as well. And as usual, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.